The next topic we're going to be talking about today is mesenteric ischemia. So, let's start with the definition. What is a mesenteric ischemia? Let's break the word into two again. Mesentery, talking about the mesenteric arteries inside your GI tract, inside the body. We're going to talk about anatomy in a minute. Ischemia, which means decreased blood flow or blood supply. So, you've learned about ischemia all this long, medical school, nursing school. So, ischemia to the mesenteric arteries, this is what's causing mesenteric ischemia. However, let's give you a little review by anatomy. So, your aorta comes off the arch from the heart, right? And this got huge aorta, runs down, and off, it drops off the celiac branch. It does the upper GI, the stomach, a little bit about, um, you know, goes to the spleen, goes all that good stuff. I'm not going to go into the crazy anatomy. If you go down a bit, you see the SMA, the superior mesenteric artery. If you go down inferior to that, it's the inferior mesenteric artery. So it's pretty easy. There's only three of them. The superior mesenteric artery is going to supply all the fog gut, right? All the stuff that you are adding them, it's gonna you know go all the way down the small about the jejunum, the ilium, all the way down to, to you know uh, up to your um, ascending colon, like two thirds away of your uh, transverse colon. Then the fear of artery supplies the rest. Okay, just a brief anatomy. Now, what is gonna cause mesenteric ischemia? That's what we are all about, like pathophysiology. What's causing this? The first and the most common thing is what? Atherosclerosis. We know it's notorious, right? So if we draw a blood vessel, you got those three levels, and on the endothelial cells, right, you start to be a cute looking plaque, right? From what? Because you know, have a lot of hyperlipidemia, low HDL, high LDLs, right? You start to deposit into your wall. And all of a sudden, if you build a lot of it, what happens to blood flow? It starts to decrease through the area. You get decreased blood flow to the mesenteric arteries. How about this? If you rupture this, just exactly how MI happens, and you develop a clot in there, that's called thrombosis, right? You develop a thrombus, bam! All of a sudden, the rest of the bowel is not getting any food. So that's one cause, atherosclerosis. The second cause is embolism. An emboli is a clot that breaks up and goes on its way. And on its way, it's kind of floating, it's kind of dropping around, and it's like, oops, it drops in here, right? So if you have atrial fibrillation, and your atrium is quivering like that, and you form a cute little clot, and the clot jumps into the left ventricle, and it jumps over the aorta and drops and goes inside and blocks off the arterial supply to the superior mesenteric artery, you get ischemia. See that? It's different with are blocking the same thing. How about this? Venous thrombosis. Now remember, arteries are gonna become arterials, arterials are gonna become capillaries, right? They're gonna branch off to cute looking smaller arterials and eventually they're gonna to get to the capillary levels, right? Where they're gonna exchange all the blood supply, and then they're gonna become veins. Which have to drain back, right? If these veins are all occluded, right? Venous thrombosis, what can cause venous thrombosis? Hypercoagulable states. Let's think about a couple. You learn this. Factor five lighting, it's one of them. Anti-thrombin three deficiency, one of them, right? Hyperhomocysteinemia. It's another cause, right? Protein C and S deficiency, these are all hypercoagulable state causes venous thrombosis, it's the same stuff, right? The blood gets backed up, and now the bowel starts to get ischemic, and it gets what? 
This guy's getting infarcted. So this is serious. You got to know this. So now that we know what causes it, what are the patients going to present with? On history and physical, let's go to the history. They can have a complaint of abdominal pain after eating. Why are they complaining about ridiculous amount of pain after they eat, right? Remember, these are not young people. It could be possibly young people who have venous thrombosis. However, it's usually older folks. In the 70 year old male, complaining of this severe abdominal pain. Every time he eats, guess what? They don't want to eat anymore because they know when they eat, it's going to hurt. Why? Because what happens is when you eat, all the blood flow goes to the GI tract, right? We want to supply blood to all the mucosa so all those enzymes can work and what? Digest food. So now, when you try to rush blood and all of a sudden you got a clot in there, you get ischemia, you get a lot of abdominal pain. If you get thrombosis, you get a lot of abdominal pain. You get a venous thrombosis, you get a lot of abdominal pain. So this is severe abdominal pain, 10 out of 10 scale. So these people back up from eating. So that's the first thing they're going to complain of. Now, on history, they're going to have, you know, intestinal angina, right? Because this is basically angina to the blood vessels going to the bowel. It's just like a heart attack inside your belly. It's no different. Medicines are almost all the same everywhere if you just know one thing, okay? Now, all the symptoms, nausea, they're vomiting. Why? Because when they vomit up this food, then they do have to worry about the pain because now the GI kind of cools down a little bit. They're going to have diarrhea, which is bloody, right? So let's take a look. Bloody diarrhea. Why do they have bloody diarrhea? Because when you get ischemia to the bowel, what happens? It infarcts. And what happens when it infarcts? The blood, the red blood spills out of the blood vessels that infarcts. And all of a sudden there's necrosis from the infarction of the bowel wall. They get blood. Bloody diarrhea. Infarction. Nausea. Vomiting. Abdominal pain. The only thing is when you want to do a physical exam, the exam you're going to be doing when they touch their belly, you're kind of lightly pushing and they're complaining of this severe abdominal pain out of proportion. That is the key. On physical exam, you touch their belly lightly and oh my god, it hurts all over. And it's all over. It's non-specific because the entire bowel is getting infarcted. Okay? So you want to know that. Now, another thing you want to know is what? Well, we do a rectal exam. Everybody has abdominal pain. You stick your hand in their butt. You check. It's going to be blood. You know something is wrong. You don't know yet, but yeah, you know something is wrong. But when you start to order labs, it might point you in the direction of where a possibility of what the cause might be. So what are we gonna order first? Lab-wise, I wanna order a complete blood count, right? Because then I'll be able to see what? Leukocytosis. A lot of white cells rush into the area of inflammation. Another thing that's extremely important that you order is a lactate level. So let's explain lactate. They're gonna have a lot of lactate, greater than four millimoles per deciliter or whatever. So now, why do you have a lactate? When you get ischemia, remember, there's not enough oxygen going to the bowel. When there's not enough oxygen, what you're forcing the bowel to do is to undergo anaerobic respiration, metabolism, which is going to form glucose to go through the glycolysis pathway, which eventually going to form what? Pyruvate. And the pyruvate will be forced to form what? Lactic acid. Because this pyruvate is not going to go to acetylcholine coenzyme A and form TCA cycle which normally needs oxygen because now we don't have any more oxygen. No oxygen means anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is going to be building a lot of lactic acid and that lactic acid is going to lead us to develop something called metabolic acidosis. That is what causes a metabolic acidosis from this lactate. 
So you want to see that. All right? When you order it, you'll be able to see it. Even like on BMP, you'll be able to see like, wow, this guy has a metabolic acidosis. That's interesting. Why? Because what? The bark up is going to be low. The pH is going to be low. Right? You're going to make it a lot of lactic acid. That is not good stuff. All right? If you don't understand metabolic acidosis, definitely go back and check out our lecture on metabolic acidosis. Amylase level is going to be high, right? Because now the pancreas is dumping all this amylase, but the GI is not, tract is not working because it's infarcted. It's spilling into their bloodstream. They also have ILDH, lactic dehydrogenase. Now, one thing you want to know is you want to order an abdominal extra on these people. Because if they've infarcted their abdomen and the bowel perfs, you'll be able to see it. A means abdominal extra, so you want to order that. And all the most important I want to order is a CT scan. Because if you have a CT, you may see the clot just sitting inside the mesenteric artery. You're like, oh, look at that. That is not good. But the gold standard, the gold standard to be able to actually diagnose this condition, let's erase this, is a mesenteric angiography. Okay, and what they do, they inject IV dye, and that will highlight the bl blood vessels so you can see it, and you might be able to see it, and you, then you're gonna be able to see the blood clot. So mesenteric angiography is the gold standard. And if you don't know what angiography means, it's basically angiomene blood vessel graphic to be allowed to see it, mesenteric. So basically IV dye to be able to, to highlight and be able to see the blood clots inside uh, the blood vessels. Now we gotta treat this patient. It's extremely important. What do we wanna do? We're gonna give him a lot of IV fluids, right? You always wanna give these guys fluids because they're having a lot of massive diarrhea bloody stool. So you want to give them fluids because they might be volume depleted intravascularly. Also you want to give them antibiotics. You can give them flagyl metronidazole. If you give them antibiotics it kills off some of the bacteria in the gut. So this bacteria cannot get into the bloodstream. One I forgot to tell you that you might see before actually I talk about treatment real quick is inside the bowel wall because it's infarcted, all the gas inside the abdominal wall, so let's say this is the GI tract, right? All the gas can now leak in between the bowel wall. And this is called pneumatosis intestinalis. So let's take a look at the word. Pneumo means air, right? Pneumatosis means air, intestinalis, air in the intestines. So that's one thing you wanna watch out for. That's why we have the abdominal extra and the CT scan so we can pick this up. Another thing you wanna see is thumb printing. If you haven't seen thumb printing sign, go on Google, just Google it. You'll see a thumb printing sign. That's another sign. Um, it's just right here, thumb printing sign. That's what you're gonna see in abdominal x-ray. So we treat them with a lot of fluids, right? Because the volume depleted, it's important. You give them a lot of fluids. Also, you just wanna give them a lot of broad spectrum antibiotics. But I, we, talk, we talked about the causes, right? If they're through a clot because they have AFib, what do you wanna give them? Put them on heparin first, right? Five to seven days and eventually switch them to warfarin. So we anticoagulate this patient. That's great if you have AFib. Another thing that's a close mesenteric ischemia, I forgot is decreased ejection fraction. If your heart is not pumping a lot of blood out, what happens? There's decreased perfusion to the, uh, the bowel arteries and then you get ischemia. So if they have an Congestive heart failure, obviously, you really get Lasix, you, you know, you give them digoxin if, you know, if they need it, whatever, you can get their heart, you know, pumping back up again. Uh, but 
The problem is if they have a thrombosis, they have a clot just sitting there, right? Like atherosclerosis, we may have to do an angioplasty and just put a stent. And what the stent will do is they'll put a light, nice little stent in here like a gauze wire so they can open up and kind of stretch out the blood vessel. That's another procedure they can do also to be able to help these patients. However, this is surgical, right? That's laparotomy. You gotta go inside the belly and be able to do this. And if it's a clot that's stuck and it's not gonna get out, you can do an embolectomy. They go in there, they suck out the clot, and now there's more perfusion to the bowel because you don't want the bowel to be infarcted. Once you infarct the bowel, that's bad, right? It's dead. Now it can't work anymore. You gotta cut it out. You get short bowel syndrome. You got all these complications. So this is a very serious disease, okay? So you want to keep an eye out for this. So worst come to worst, if the bowel gets infected, infarcted, they might get have to get it cut out. Uh, remember, if the bowel gets infarcted at the same time and you don't pick this up, they can go into sepsis. You know, the bowel tract is your bowel is designed so that it keeps everything within inside the tube. If anything leaks out of the tube, it gets into the bloodstream, it's a big problem. Now you're gonna get sepsis, septic shock, people die from this, this is serious. That would get multi-system organ failure, okay? So we just talk about mesenteric ischemia in short, it can cause by all those three causes, atherosclerosis, embolism, venous uh, thrombosis, right? Physical exam is gonna be pain out of proportion, it worsens every time they eat, you get an x-ray, you see air inside their, uh, inside their bowel, or an abdominal extra or CT scan, and you treat it by IV fluids, antibiotics, and at the same time, you get anticoagulate this patient, okay? Remember to order the labs, you see high lactate, LDH, so they can give you some of the diagnosing and kind of point you that direction. And they might have a history of having an atrial fibrillation, and watch out for all this history and hyperlipidemia. That's the end of our lecture. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.